everybody my name is ambika and all of you are here with me on unacademy's youtube channel which is let's crack cbse commerce so guys before uh, beginning with the revision of our uh, today's topic i want to tell all of you about unacademy how unacademy functions and how this is genuinely the best 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 educational app for all of you right so let's get started let's know about our uh, Uh, you know the platform which is an academy first and then we'll uh, directly move to our topic so first of all here on an academy we have got the two subscriptions right the first one is plus and the second one is um, i'll tell all of you in a moment about that so first let's talk about the plus subscription here in you will going to have daily live classes now live classes that means the educator will going to teach and here in you can chat with them chat as in that you can drop a message in a comment box that ma'am here or sir i have a query doubt uh, related to this topic or any of such things right you can engage in discussions n number of discussions can take place in that particular class and we are having polls there so now what are polls if you have ever witnessed or uh, have seen kbc convening a crorepati so therein you must have checked out that we have got four options a b c and d right so uh, among those four options you have to opt the correct one as a correct answer isn't it so in the same way we have got multiple polls here and all these things are possible while the session is pretty active right so all these things are quite possible when the session is going on that means daily live classes are there and they are daily they are regularly taking place next thing we have got is live tests and quizzes so you can evaluate your preparation with our regular mock tests and quizzes and get detailed analysis on your performance so how you have performed how many quizzes you have attempted you know how many questions were being asked what was your performance so everything will be shared there these mock tests as a term mock itself means uh, you know the imitation of the actual one so these are in the same fashion how we have got those um, uh, our exams right so they are in the similar fashion next we have got the structured courses so all our courses are structured in line with your exam syllabus to help you best prepare for it and next is unlimited access so one subscription gets you access to all our live and recorded courses to forge from the comfort of your home and on your specific devices so finally what all you will going to get daily live classes live tests and quizzes structured courses and unlimited access to all the other courses okay and that is something which is possible at the ease at the comfort of your house and you're not supposed to hop from one coaching center to the other next is we have got the second subscription i was talking about that is our iconic subscription so here on iconic we have got the personal mentor right personal mentor will going to guide you right uh, and that is basically the top expert and he is a mentor right so who will going to align who will going to you know manage your learning strategy he or she will going to sit with you plan out things for you and resolve any of your doubts if you have any pertaining to your subject okay next is live doubt solution so we have attend exclusive doubt solving classes to solve your subject doubts get customized study plan to track your progress so that is all there with our live doubt solution classes next we have got the parent connect so regular open hours for parents to discuss learners performance report with me, uh, man, mentor receive weekly performance reports so here in how exactly you have performed and uh, you know how many co- quizzes questions you have attempted what is your position all these things will be discussed with the parents by your mentor so your parents will going to have a clear cut uh, you know a, a record like how many classes you have attended how you are performing and things like that and whatsoever whatsoever are the benefits of plus which we have just recently checked out they are already here that is live classes from top educators mock tests and quizzes structured batches course in uh, line with exam syllabus right next comes our educators they are the top notch educators of the nation they are right here to impart to share their knowledge with all of you and if you have quest to know more if you have quest to know better so therein you have to download this particular app 
and that is too easy all you need to do is go to the play store type unacademy learning app this is how it will going to look like right so uh, all you need to do is install right install the app and it will be right there on your gadget next is how you will come to know what all classes are there by uh, what all educators and which topic are they going to cover that's too easy that's too easy and um, so we have got our own telegram uh, channel that is quest 12 cbse commerce right so you can if you are not having the app you can download the telegram app type the link in url so you can type out this thing quest 12 uh, cbse commerce and then you will be right here with uh, and you uh, regularly you will get the notifications regarding your classes right so what all are the benefits of plus that here you have got the best educators therein you are having interactive live classes live tests and quizzes and you have got the creative corner as well so in creative corner what all is there that you know uh, cbc doesn't want us to become a uh, simply people who just who are just pro with uh, academic things no cbc wants the overall development of uh, a child isn't it so in the same way as per uh, how cbc wants us to be so that's wherein an academy steps into so an academy is genuinely uh, helping you out in enhancing your creative side as well wherein they are helping you with they are teaching you and that too by the top experts of the nation uh, in origami in robotics in coding in story writing in creative writing and what not so all these things are right there in our creative corner in iconic sessions we have got the best educators interactive live classes live tests and quizzes creative corner plus the best mentor which is the personal mentor live doubt solution parent connect and study planner is right there for all of you right so if you are really convinced if you have that quest you know to know better to enhance things uh, when it comes to your knowledge so you have to download the app as i've already told you and for your plus subscription the cart value of each of the months a year for to one month it is 2700 for three months is 5850 and things like that so it carries till 24 months i would recommend because you're in grade 11 so you because we are left with you know few months for grade 11 and you need to uh you know uh, need to work hard right so for that we have got our classes there on uh, for 11th and as well as 12th so i i would rather suggest it go for 18 month subscription and for that matter 15 and 18 months would be great for you right and again uh, the best important thing is that you can use my code which is ambika yeah and you will going to get a discount of 10% it's the highest discount which you can get and uh, by using this code simply you will surely going to get the discount next is with iconic uh, iconic i have already told you that you have got a personal mentor all the benefits of plus and what not right so here in the cart value of each of the months uh, for like specific months 6 months 15 months 18 months 24 months are right here again uh, because you are in grade 11 few months of 11th are left we are left with 12th as well so you need to uh, brush up your um, you know every doubts if you have any so that can need to be clarified right you need to brush them away so for that i would rather suggest go for iconic because we have got all the benefits of plus and the extra uh, things which are also there as you are already aware of so for that you can use my code which is ambika and with that you will going to get a discount of 10% so guys please 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 download the app and don't compromise when it comes to learning right so yeah it's there so uh, let's get started with our today's topic which is the voice of the rain which is written by walt whitman so it's a beautiful poem which is a part of your hornbill right so how we'll going to uh, discuss this we will going to check out each of the line of the poem uh, the word meanings will be discussed analysis will be done and on top of it we will going to cover the ncert questions and together we'll going to solve the mcqs right so let's get started okay the first question is simple what does the rain symbolize the existence and continuation of life right so because of rain only that is how we have got you know continuation is a cycle there's a process right uh, where, wherein we have got uh, the involvement of rain isn't it so for that rain is really important rain is um, i mean there is no such um, thing which 
you know which can replace rain isn't it it you feel so better you feel so energetic and you feel so uh, i mean and it's not about feeling rather the crops how we are surviving right now you need water for everything right so for that here in water or basically the rain enters into the picture so that is generally it stands for god's blessing so rain is basically disguised you know into the form of rain rather it's a blessing by god because it say it is being said that whenever god is ready it showers it showers the blessings and the blessing is in the form of the rain now rain it is a primary source of fresh water as you already know that it is a primary source of fresh water and uh, you have um, like generally uh, because of global warming and what not how the glaciers are melting and uh, it is a, a topic for serious discussion isn't it but it is generally a primarily source of fresh water it provides sustainable condition for inhabitants on earth and how we are managing our lives be it the humans be it the animals and what not right so there uh, are uh, you know so are we are able to survive it because of simple because of rain and useful for crop irrigation obviously this is something which you already know and harbinger of god's mercy and that is simply uh, you know as i've already told you that god is happy and that is wherein the rain enters into the picture now the poem voice of the rain presents the cyclic movement of the rain and the blessing it showers on the earth so there is a cyclic movement right there is a cyclic movement of the rain this is something you already know isn't it that it originates from earth then it goes up in the form of a dew right it it uh, you know uh, it becomes a cloud then it rains right and then how it adds up to the uh, to your water body right so that how it evaporates so there is a proper circle right there is a cyclic movement it goes on it goes on isn't it so that is it is being mentioned the poem presents the cyclic movement of the rain and the blessing it showers on the earth walt whitman composes a conversation so this poem is basically a conversation as there is always a type of a poem right in which category it will fall isn't it so this is basically a conversational poem and this conversation is taking place between the poet and the rain there is a conversation between the poet and the rain between him and the rain as it falls from the heavens upon the earth in, in this poem so heaven is basically from sky from cloud and how it falls back on the earth now it's time to meet our uh, poet which is walt whitman let me tell you let me tell you guys that walt whitman is one of the greatest poets of american literature right he has made his position very clear uh, he has made his uh, you know there's a uh, i mean his he has created a benchmark when it comes to poetry and uh, yes he has given a lot of there's a great contribution by walt whitman in the field of literature so walt whitman was born in may 31st 1819 uh, and he died in 19 uh, 1892 is one of the most significant american writers of the 19th century so he is one of the significant writers of the 19th century and many critics consider him the nation's greatest poet as i've already told you critics also claim that yes indeed he is the greatest poet of the nation his book leaves of grass which he edited and expanded over the course of his life is a masterpiece of american literature it is being um i mean for americans yes it is a one of the greatest uh, works and all his poems he has uh, you know uh, he has a uh, uh, mentioned all his poems there in the book itself right which is your leaves of grass which he edited and expanded over the course of his Uh, life and he has expanded this he has mentioned a lot about uh, all his poems are right here so there is a collection of his poetry leaves of grass is a masterpiece of american literature in addition to writing poetry walt whitman worked as a journalist and volunteered in military hospitals also so yes he worked as a journalist and he volunteered in military hospitals as well now so therefore uh, the poet is walt whitman 
Whitman is one of the famous American poets of the 19th century. This is something which you already know. He was born in 1819 and died in 1902. And uh, famous works or published works are Leaves of Grass. So it is basically amalgamation, not amalgamation, rather a collection of, uh, it's a book, a collection of his uh, poems and uh, drum taps and democratic vistas. So these are the works by Walt Whitman. Okay. Next is the central idea of the poem. So it's time to know the central idea, the gist. Okay. So this poem is about what? What is a poem all about? What is the gist? What is the central idea of this whole poem? Okay. So now let's get started with our poem. The poem, The Voice of the Rain by Walt Whitman signifies the eternal role that the rain plays in nurturing, quenching and purifying the various elements on earth. So this poem is basically is talking about the eternal. Eternal means never ending. Yeah. So this poem is talking about the eternal role, the never ending role that the rain plays. What is the role of a rain that it nurtures? It quenches a uh, quench of thirst is there. Yeah. Thirst for anything and purifying the various elements of earth. It purifies the uh, how dust and all it gets. It just gets purifies because of the rain. The rain returns the favor to its place of origin from where it rises, unseen from the depths of the water and from the land. So now rain is basically favoring, you know, favoring in a way that it is returning back to the uh, to the uh, to the place of its own origin. Okay, it is coming back to its own origin from where it rises, unseen from the depths of the water. Why unseen? Yeah, because it evaporates. So you cannot see it from the naked eye. Basic geography and science, isn't it? Depths of the water and from the land. The rain itself is explaining to the reader about its origin. So herein, as I have already told you, that it is a conversational poem. Yeah, it's a conversational poem. So indeed, there is something which all of you are required to know that here in the rain is also speaking. Okay, the rain itself is explaining to the reader about its origin. So the rain itself is replying, telling to its reader about its origin. That's point one, work and its cyclic movement. So in there are three phases of the rain, how it origins from where it actually origins, what is the work of the rain and what is the cyclic movement of the rain, like how it uh, completes its own uh, circle. A comparison has also been drawn between rain and music as both of them make the world more lively and return to the place of origin after fulfilling their purpose. So another important thing which you need to keep in mind while reading this poem is that it's a comparison. There's a comparison between two things drawn between rain and music. Okay. And here music will can be, I mean, can be considered as poem also. Clear. So it is talking about between there's a, there's a, uh, there's a clear cut um, comparison between the rain and the music as both of them. You know how when we listen to music, we just rejuvenate ourselves, isn't it? And how it is so lively. If we, if we are feeling sad, so we just suddenly start feeling like um, woohoo, we can nail it, isn't it? So that is there with the rain and the music. So uh, let's check it out. That's the central idea. So what's the central idea of the poem? It, the poem is talking. It's a conversational poem. This is the first thing, right? Uh, let's just write it down. Um, sorry. Yeah. Um. Okay, sorry. So it's a conversational poem. This is something which I've already told you. It talks about the origin, work and cyclic movement of the rain. This is something which you already know. The third, this is the second point. Okay. And the third point is there's a comparison. There's a comparison between the rain and music. There is a comparison between rain and music. Okay. Now the theme. So we have checked out the gist, the overall summary of the poem. And now it's time to check out the theme of the poem. The poem is an artistic representation of the scientific fact 
please remember this now how come artistic representation of the scientific fact now we have checked out in the gist also that the poem is talking about the cyclic movement yeah which is basically when we call it as water cycle right so there is a proper formation of it right how it uh, originates is evaporation of water because of sun you know the water evaporates it goes and merges with the cloud and that's how it showers right so now that is your scientific uh, scientific reality attached to it ki aise hota hai fir aise hota hai fir waise hota hai there is no uh, there is no denial to this fact isn't it but artistic representation as in it is the poet has made a poem out of it so that is basically an artistic representation of the scientific facts okay of the water cycle which is compared to a song starting from its origin and coming back so it is talking about the water cycle okay now how it is uh, it is being compared to a song now song from its origin and it how it comes back it is the conscious effort of the poet to describe the rain through the metaphor of the song so now poet has made a comparison he has made a conscious effort of the how he is basically uh, comparing how he is basically mentioning you know the poem the, the rain and the poem together there is a comparison as per the poet the hidden meaning in the poem is the song arises in one soul and comes back to the singer to bless him or her to bring spiritual fulfillment to the singer similarly the rain that started in the sea comes back to bless this earth bringing the same spiritual fulfillment and divine mercy there is a another hidden latent meaning hum log na hidden ke liye we can use one more term which is latent latent means hidden meaning attached to this poem that how you know there is a song arises in one soul and comes back to the singer so it um, the song is basically it germinates in the soul of a singer and how when he writes it down it becomes a song right in the, that is basically a spiritual journey in the same way that rain is basically your um, it originates from earth and it comes back as a divine mercy to the rain uh, to the uh, earth now it's time to read the poem so for that i would request all of you to take out your hornbill book and in that you are requested to take out page number 41 of your book okay i'm going to read the poem and then we'll going to begin with the paraphrasing of the poem right so we'll going to pick up each of the paragraphs and uh, we'll going to understand it line by line uh, sorry not a paragraph in poems we have stanzas okay it begins it's uh, as i've already told you it's there on page number uh, 41 of your book the voice of the rain it begins who art thou said i to the soft falling shower which strange to tell gave me an answer as here translated i am the poem of earth said the voice of the rain eternal i rise impalpable out of the land and the bottomless sea upward to heaven whence vaguely formed altogether changed and yet the same i descend i descend to leave the droughts atomies dust layers of the globe and all that in them without me were seeds only latent unborn and forever by day and night i give back life to my own origin and make pure and beautify it for song issuing for its birth place after fulfillment wandering wrecked or unwrecked duly with love returns oh my god it's a beautiful poem okay so now uh, we're going to pick up each of the stanzas we're going to uh, paraphrase it and we're going to figure out the difficult words associated with it okay here goes stanza 1 and who art thou so basically this is a, a poem written by walt whitman in 19th century so that is where in he has used archaic english the english which we are not using anymore but that is being um, somewhat prevalent at that time right so who art thou who art here means who are and thou means you if you have read shakespeare you must know this language right said i to the soft falling shower 
Now, who is I here? That is our poet. Okay. Who art thou? Said I to the soft falling shower. Which, strange to tell, gave me an answer. Again, who is me here? That's your poet. So he's like, wait, and it is, I know it's so strange for me to tell you, but for a change, when I ask the soft falling shower, soft falling shower is basically referring to rain. Okay, and for a change, for it, that is so quirky, that is so strange, and it actually answered back to me. Yeah, as here translated. And here I am translating that for all of you. Now, these two lines are basically by the poet himself. And now, whatever we are going to read further is by the rain. These are the words by rain. I am the poem of earth, said the voice of the rain. Now, who is I here? That's our rain. And rain is replying that I am the poem of earth, said the voice of the rain. Now, thou means you, as I've already told you. Soft falling means dropping softly. Yeah. Shar means raindrops when they fall continuously on earth. Right. So now, explanation of the first stanzas is, the poem begins with the poet asking for the identity of the soft falling rain shower. The poem is beginning with the poet. As you already know, the first two lines are by a poet himself. So he is basically asking for the identity of the soft falling rain shower. Like, who are you? And to the poet's surprise, much to the surprise of the poet, the rain replies to his question. So in fact, the rain also replied to his question which the poet translates for its readers. So wherein those, the answer which is being given by the rain is, uh, is basically being translated by our own uh, poet. The rain in its own voice tells the poet that she is the poem of this earth and rain in its own voice. Herein, the rain in its own voice is telling the poet that I am the poem of this earth. Earth. Please remember that she is mentioning herself as the poem of this earth. The rain is trying to say that as music or poetry gives pleasure to human beings. It says the, the rain is trying to say that. What is the rain trying to say? That as music or poetry gives pleasure to human beings, the rain gives happiness to mother earth. So how we get, I am mentioning it here, please understand this, how we get our happiness by relishing or enjoying music or poetry yeah it gives pleasure right it gives pleasure to human beings in the same way the rain gives happiness to mother earth okay so how we get our pleasure we here refers to the human beings by listening to song or music or poetry in the same way the earth gets pleasure while when it rains. Okay. Here comes stanza 2. Eternal, I rise impalpable out of the land and the bottomless sea upward to heaven whence vaguely formed altogether changed and yet the same. Okay, so here we are on stanza 2. Eternal means everlasting, which means never ending. Everlasting or I rise impalpable, so unable to be felt or to be felt by okay so uh, when it evaporates we can't see it right so there is a clear-cut connotation of evaporation 
out of the land and the bottomless sea upward to heaven whence whence means from where wiggly means not clear formed altogether changed yeah form means into a specific uh, formation and get the same okay eternal i rise impalpable out of the land and the bottomless sea upward to heaven whence vaguely formed altogether change and get the same so now let's understand this particular stanza the poet says that the rain is an eternal process so this rain is basically an eternal process it's like a never ending process but it takes different forms at different times but it does take different formation during different times it rises from the land right and the sea deep sea in the form of an intangible water vapor again when it evaporates we can't see it from our naked eyes isn't it so how it is taking different formations so from the uh, from the sea and from the land it evaporates right which we can't see from our naked eye so that is formation 1 and goes up to the sky there it takes an indistinct shape in the form of clouds and then it merges itself with the clouds so the first formation please i want you to dissect the poem in every way so that there is no confusion related to this okay so first form is intangible where it it is simply a water vapor emerging from earth or bottomless because i have quoted from the poem so i need to write in the inverted commas okay and then the second formation is it merges with the clouds although it changes in its form or shape its core matter remains the same obviously it is changing its formation its shape isn't it but still the core the basic element of it still remains the same since vapor and clouds contain water they can get transformed into the other the words impalpable and eternal indicate that nature is not fully understood and some part of it always remains beyond our reach so yes we can't simply understand what is there what the nature is all you know trying to say trying to do for all of us it is so difficult to understand the nature next comes a stanza 3 uh, here it goes i descend to leave the drops at me's dust layers of the globe and all that in them without me were seeds only latent unborn so now latent means hidden now i descend means falling down ascending descend hum log mathematics mein karte the descend means falling down so that means move or fall to leave leave means to wash or to remove the drots drots you understand uh, there is a when there is uh, all together dry yeah atomies is you know very tiny particles dust layer of the globe globe here refers to earth and all that in them without me were say were seeds only latent and unborn so yahan pe latent ka matlab hai that they are uh, hidden here hidden means they are inactive that they are in active now it's time to dissect our third stanza of the poem the rain drops pour down from above to wash away drops and dust layers enveloping the earth now this rain drop <coughs> excuse me so when it pours down okay so it washes away it just cleans it just clear cleans if i just cleans you know the drought the dry spell and dust layer and if there is any dust layer by any chance it just uh, remove that yeah this is something which we already know i don't think so we need explanation for this right so if there is a lot of dust if there is a lot of drought right so it just uh, we we just needs to cast it cast it away because by rain only rain can do that okay 
it satisfies the thirst of the dry earth and yes it does satisfies the thirst of the dry earth and heals everything that is degrading and is lying lifeless and it heals up it actually purifies everything that is lying there lifeless the showers remove the dust particles and make earth clean and green so the rain it actually showers yes it comes on earth and it it removes it uh, eliminates the dust particles if there are any and again our earth looks so green and so beautiful आप लोग ने जब बारिश में देखा होगा तो अगर कहीं पे डस्ट है हम लोग की ट्रीज कितने ग्रीन कितने लश ग्रीन हो जाते हैं ना सो दैट्स बिकॉज ऑफ रेन द रेन आल्सो हेल्प्स इन द जर्मिनेशन ऑफ सीड्स व्हिच वर लाइंग डॉर्मेंट ड्यू टू अ ड्राई स्पेल जर्मिनेशन द होल प्रोसेस ऑफ साइंस यू नो एंड एज यू ऑल नो दिस इज अर्टिस्टिक रिप्रेजेंटेशन आर्टिस्टिक रिप्रेजेंटेशन of the this whole poem is basically your artistic representation of the scientific facts right now here comes our stanza 4 it says and forever by day and night i give back life to my own origin and make pure and beautify it right so now that's where in it is saying that and forever by day and night i give back life life means you know giving back a uh, the 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 life that here means happiness also to my origin and make pure and beautify it for song issuing from its birth place after fulfillment wandering red or unread duly with love returns okay so now let's check out what this stanza is trying to tell us okay so first of all origin here means source let's just write down each one of it so that it becomes really easy for us to understand this then we have got beautify which means make beautiful then we have got issuing which means originating sorry uh fulfilling means completing the cycle wandering means running here and there okay moving from one place to another and forever by day and night i give back life to my own origin and make pure and beautify it for song issuing from its birth place after fulfillment wandering red or unread duly with love returns so here in the one which is being read written in parenthesis which means your bracket it is called as parenthesis are the words by the poet its himself now The rain is involved in a continual process of giving life on earth by providing water to dormant seeds and making the earth more beautiful and full of greenery. So here in the rain is as you already know is pro- is involved in the continual process which is like a never ending process of giving life to earth by providing water right by providing what water to dormant seeds dormant means inactive seeds
and making the earth more beautiful and full of greenery. Rain helps in enhancing the beauty of earth. So rain basically helps in enhancing. It means it look more beautiful. The earth as in the absence of water, everything turns dull or lifeless and dust accumulates. Accumulate means gather everywhere. Now, the last two lines are the poet's own words and his reflections upon the answers given by the ring so now the last two as i've already told you the ones which are written in the parentheses the brackets right so these are the words of poet himself and now he's reflecting reflecting means he's pondering upon the answers what the brain what the rain has given to the poet the poet observes that the life of rain is similar to that of a song now from here and it is really important if you want to take a screenshot please do so herein, the poet observes that the life of rain is similar. It is exactly similar to that of a song, right? Life of rain. So herein, life of rain is similar to that of a song. A song or poem is creativity at its best. It has the power to calm, heal, rejuvenate, transform and thrill. Right? In the same way, repeated evaporation and condensation purifies the earth. The entire environment gets drenched in the rain. Dust particles settle down and there is greenery everywhere which makes the whole earth beautiful to look at. The poet therefore draws a parallel between rain and music as both have rhythm. Please, please, please keep a note of this that as both have rhythm and ability to thrill, both of them rejuvenate and beautify life and both of these things it rejuvenates it it gives life and it actually beautifies our lives as well so that is there with rain clear okay now the voice of the rain poetic devices used in the Poem. So uh, now let's just check it out. What all poetic devices were being used in this poem? The first one is personification, right? So uh, the po the rain has been personified as it has been given a voice in the rain. Obviously, voice uh, the rain can't speak to any one of us, isn't it? But that is wherein we clearly know that there is a personification because what do we mean by personification? The humanly attributes. Uh, given to uh, non-human things. It can be your both living or non-living things, right? Next is metaphor. So I am the poem of the earth. The poet uses a metaphor to compare how the rain leaves the ground to come back to the ground, giving back to it much like a person who leaves its home only to come back after fulfilling its journey. So I am the poem of the earth is basically a metaphor. Next one is your parallelism, which means, so here in, in parallel, parallelism, we have got, uh, the poet has drawn a parallel. There is a parallel between the rain and the song of a poet. How these things are being compared with one another. That is called as a parallelism. Next is we have got hyperbole. This is something which you already know, wherein you are exaggerating something. Yeah, that is simply called as hyperbole. So bottomless sea is an example of hyperbole. The poet describes sea as bottomless, which is an exaggerated statement to bring out the desired effect. Right? Bahut exaggerate karke bol rahe. Obviously, there is a bottom of a sea, isn't it? But therein the poet has wanted to show the uh, you know both uh, uh, environment create collectively that is why he has created hyperbole in the first in the first line of the poem soft falling shower gives the reader an image of gentle rain or 
drizzle so the first the soft falling shower it gives a reader an image of gentle rain or drizzling during the dialogue between the poet and the rain it creates an image of showers or drops of water falling down from the heavens to earth and infusing it with greenery purity and beauty right so these are all the poetic devices which in being which is being used by the poet right now let's start it's time to check out yeah now it's time to check out the summary of the poem pose that we will together going to solve out our question answers of uh, the book and we will together check out the mcqs as well okay so let's get started in this poem the speaker recounts a conversation he had with the falling raindrops so as you already know it's a conversational poem so therein the poet is having a conversation with the falling raindrops he asks the rain and who are you so it is being mentioned that the poet uh, asks the rain who are you and strangely and to to his surprise the rain also answers that i am rain right and strangely the rain answers calling itself the poem of the earth so it has called himself the poem of uh, the rain itself is called uh, that i am the poem of the earth the rain goes on to describe how it rises intangibly now what do we mean by intangibly that something which we cannot see as vapor out of the land and sea and floats up to heaven where it changes form and becomes a cloud right so there in it changes forms and it finally becomes a cloud it merges up with the rain then it falls back to earth to refresh the drought filled land allowing seeds to grow into something vital and beautiful so now because of this rain it uh, it uh, actually it uh, removes the drought and it removes the dust particles from the earth and it lets allow means to let seeds grow into something which is vital and beautiful the speaker the equates then equates the role of the rain to a poet's role in crafting this song or poem because whitman refers to his song as songs throughout leaves of grass he goes on to write that the song is born in the poet's heart so this uh, whatever the po poet write it actually takes place in the heart of the poet it leaves the so poet's soul and changes form but is always the same as its core and eventually returns to the poet as love from its reader and it comes back to the poet how rain originates from the uh, earth or from bottomless sea goes up merges with the cloud falls back and it comes back to its own origin in the same way which is earth or sea in the same way the music which is being created by the creator it goes out it has its own journey and it comes back to the creator in the form of a praise or in the form of any criticism right so now it's time to analyze the whole poem and with that we'll going to check out the ncert questions okay so the voice of the rain does not follow any specific form so there is no specific form added to this poem there is no rhyme scheme added to this poem or meter it is written in free verse we have checked out when we have uh, checked out the um, you know uh, the poem a photograph that time i told you that there is a free verse there are different types of poetry and one of them is free free verse it is made up of one stanza with nine distinct lines the first two lines contain the speaker's question which he asks the rain the first two lines are basically the question which he asks the rain and who are you the rain's response makes up the meaning of the now the whatever is uh, the reply of the rain it adds up to the to those six lines whitman places the final line in parenthesis in order to separate the speaker's words from the rains so now the last two lines are in parenthesis that means it's in the brackets just to separate the words of the speaker from that of the rain so there it is a free verse first thing you need to remember about this poem it's that it's written in the form of a free verse second is the first two lines first two lines and uh last two lines are the a uh, voice 
of the poet okay and uh, he then how it goes you know that that's a reply of the rain at the end of the poem the speaker compares poetry to the rain equating art with earth's most essential element so now at the end of the poem the speaker that is the poet himself is comparing poetry he is comparing poetry to the rain equating art with earth's most essential element and he is comparing art art is poetry music any of those things with earth's most essential element and that is basically the rain here whitman reveals the high level of importance he put on his poems right so and herein he is uh, how rain is so important it's so inevitable right so he is comparing his work in fact all sort of poetry and music with this uh, rain whitman treated his poems like his children he put all of his emotional energy into his work and then released his poems into the world like water evaporating in the air so once he has written something he will going to let it go out into the world how rain sorry how earth also let go uh, the rain out into the world to have its own journey each reader then has a different relationship with whitman's words so now how we perceive a poem i am having a different outlook perhaps you're having a different outlook so all of us are taking a different um, count on this poem right which changes the effect of the poem while maintaining its spirit then the reader rain <coughs> praise the readers rain praise criticism love and hate back down to whitman after that the poem occupies a different role in poet's life so once that is being done it goes out for its journey and then it comes back right whitman's comparison between poems and rain is demonstrative of his transcendental beliefs transcendental belief means that you are uh, there is a self reliance yeah rather than associate his poetry with something modern and man made he instead chooses to associate it with the eternal cycles of the natural world so instead of comparing it with any of the modern day belief or man made belief he is rather decided to associate his work with rain which is a natural phenomenon he did not write poetry for the purpose of making a splash he wanted his work to be affecting vital and eternal just like nature he describes his audience as drought atomies dust layers of the globe as if reading and you know how that is simply an imaginative part of which when that he is calling the readers maybe drops you know uh, maybe atomies full of dust particles and what not but once we read poetry once we read maybe whitman's poetry or once we read any sort of poetry or when we listen to music it just satisfies our soul right it just cleanses our soul in the same way that is what the rain also do dust layers of the globe as if reading walt whitman's poetry is all they need to flourish and grow okay so now it's time to check out the ncert questions which are there which are there on page number 42 of your book the first question is there are two voices in the poem and you already know it now i believe because we have discussed that in detail yeah so there are two voices in the poem who do they belong to and which lines indicate this so to whom exactly these line refer to and uh, whom they are belong directly the poem begins in a conversational tone so this is something which you already know please mention that this is a conversational poem the two voices in the poem are the voice of the poet and the voice of the rain so the two voices in the poem is that of the poet and that of the earth okay the lines that indicate the voice of the poet and the rain are who are you said i to the falling shower so you have to bachcha quote the lines from the poem also and whenever you are doing that you have to quote as i've already told you from poem or from text and whenever you are doing that please put them into commas and the lines that indicate the voice of the rain are i am the poem of earth said the voice of the rain so therein because it is being asked there are two voices in the rain you have told it's a conversational poem the few lines uh, are by the rain and the sorry the few lines are by the poet and the other uh, the others are by rain and then ab aapko wale lines quote karne honge 
the question is who do they who do they belong to that is to the poet and to the rain there is a part of the second question third part of the question is uh, which lines indicate this so then you have to quote lines from the text that is mandatory you have to do that okay next question is what does the phrase strange to tell mean what does the phrase strange to tell mean the phrase strange to tell means that it is quite strange for the poet to believe and express in words that the soft falling rain replied to his question yeah that's when he told us this thing which is line 2 of stanza 1 which strange to tell give me an answer give me an answer as here translated so that the rain replied to his question who are you so it is so strange for me to tell that the rain replied the phrase strange to tell means that it is quite strange for the poet to believe and express in words that the soft falling rain replied to his question at the beginning of the poem the poet inquires the rain about its identity to which the rain replies that it is the poem of earth guess he indeed asks the rain and to his much surprise the rain replied that i am the poem of earth there are altogether six questions okay we are on question number 3 right now okay there is a parallel drawn between rain and music the parallel means as uh, we have already talked when we were discussing figures of speech poetic devices which is being used parallelism wherein it is being uh, made between rain and music which words indicate this explain the similarity between the two so we need to pick out the words and we have to talk about the similarity if there is any between two because hum bol rahe hain parallel you remember mathematics mein parallel lines hoti hain that they go uh parallel to each other they are similar the lines i am the poem of earth said by the voice of the rain reflects a connection between rain and poet so basically it there's a connection between rain and the poet this connection becomes more easily visible in the final two lines and now we have to quote the lines which is for song issuing from its birth place after fulfillment wandering wrecked or unwrecked duly with love returns in these lines the poet draws similarity between rain and music observing that the life cycle of rain and song are alike so the life cycle of rain and song are similar the song issues from the heart of the poet and travels to reach others it wanders and whether heard and enjoyed or not eventually returns to its creator with all due love similarly rain originates from the earth and after fulfilling its role of spreading beauty and purity returns to its origin but both are perpetual in nature perpetual means never ending moreover the sound of the soft falling rain is in itself a kind of music so you need to create a comparison there is supposed to be a parallel study between the two of the things okay <clears throat> here comes the fourth question of your um, ncrt book how is the cyclic movement of rain brought out in the poem compare it with what you have learned in science so you need to make a cyclic movement movement of the rain which is being presented in the poem and you need to compare it with the actual cycle of uh, you know a water cycle which is we which we have which we discuss in our science in the poem the water rises from the land and the bottomless sea to reach the sky there it transforms itself into wake formation of clouds different in their structure than the water from which they originate after wandering after moving here and there these clouds descend to the earth in the form of rain to provide relief to the drought ridden areas and infuse life into the unborn and latent seeds the rain renders the earth with beauty and purity in science we learn the cyclic process of rain in terms like evaporation condensation precipitation flowing rivers ground water and ocean water etc while in the poem the same process becomes interesting and unusual the rain 
speaks itself to describe its cause. So you can uh, pick it out the lines which are there in the poem and the actual process of science because you know you have to pick it out that ways and that is how you can do that. Last question from your NCRT book. What are the last two lines? Why are sorry the last two lines put into brackets? The lines in the bracket indicate the reflections, observations and thoughts of the poet. So the last lines, they are being put into bracket because they are talking about the reflections, the observations and thoughts which are that of the poet. He makes observations about the life course of a song and draws similarities between the life cycle of a song and rain. And there is a clear cut uh, similar similarity between that of the uh, song and the other one is that of the life cycle of the rain okay so now we have covered all the things from our um sorry one more question is there list the pair of opposites found in the poem day night wrecked unwrecked rise descent too easy now so what all we have covered in our poem in this particular lecture we have checked out about the author Then we have checked out the process of rain. But okay, we can add it in later. We have read the whole poem. Reading. We have checked out the whole poem. That means paraphrasing was also done. Yeah. Glossary was covered. Hard words were being discussed. Right. We have checked out critical appreciation. Figures of speech, everything is being covered in that. We have checked out the NCRT questions also. And now it's time to do the quiz together. Okay. So we have covered all the seven elements of the poem. Yeah. So it's time to begin with the quiz. As you know, how we do, how do we do our quizzes? You will going to have question for options related to it and the uh, one which you believe is the correct will be the answer of the question. Okay. We have 20 questions altogether. Clear? The poem. The voice of the rain is a conversation between... <gasps> please, please, please. There is no denial to the fact that question you don't have to ask. I know, I know so clearly that you know this. The poem, the voice of the rain is a conversation between... Poet and rain, poet and mountains, rain and trees, birds and rain. No, no and no and yes. Okay, so that it's, it's a conversational poem and the conversation is taking place between the poet and the rain. Okay, next question. What does the poet ask to the soft falling shower? Now the soft falling shower is basically our rain. So what does the poet ask to the rain? What do you do? What is your name? Who are you or how are you doing? What do you do? No. What is your name? No. It was who art thou. You remember this? T-H-O-U. And I told you art means are, thou means you. That is who are you? That is this. Option C. Who are you? See, it's too easy to answer quizzes if you can, if you will genuinely eliminate the irrelevant ones and the remaining one will be the correct answer. What does the rain reply to the poet's question? Who are you? What does the rain reply to the poet's question? Rain ne kya reply kya when poet asks, who are you? She is rain. She is poem of earth. She is rain from mountains. She is poem of mountains. <clears throat> the lines are line three i am the poem of earth so that is she is the poem of earth clear see that's too easy agar aise eliminate karke karenge agar humko lines bhi mil jayen yaad hai that's too easy to attend why does the rain 
tell the poet that she cannot be touched why does the rain tell the poet that she cannot be touched because she is water but we can touch water yeah because she rises in the form of water vapor okay because she is in the form of clouds okay or none of the above in b because she is in the form of water vapor sorry this is the one that we cannot see from our naked eyes water vapor can we no right so because she rises in the form of water vapor clear uh, from which two places does the rain rise in the form of water vapor so that is being mentioned in the poem so clearly so vividly so our the options available are land and bottomless sea land and ocean mountains and land or none of the upper i told you that there is a usage of hyperbole in the poem yeah there is a usage of hyperbole in the poem so that is clearly land and bottomless sea because bottomless sea that is talking about the hyperbole exaggeration of something so that is bottomless sea clear what happens to the earth when the rain falls back on the surface of earth so what exactly happens to the earth when rain falls back on the surface of the earth it provides water okay yes it beautifies and purifies the earth right it helps in greenery yes it provides water to flora and fauna now if you will see these are the things which is being genuinely actively done by rain without the doubt there is no denial to the fact that it provides water yes it does it beautifies it beautifies and purifies the earth oh yes it does it helps in greenery indeed it provides water to flora and fauna yes but when we are attempting such questions we have to put ourselves out of the context and we have to see what the poem and the poet is trying to tell so here it is definitely talking about it beautif beautifies and purifies the earth whatever is being mentioned in the poem you need to pick out that one okay because that is the only relevant answer which you can provide question 7 how does the rain help the seeds inside the earth it is how does the rain help the seeds inside the earth it provides water provides life and helps them grow provides life or none of the above yeah so that is it indeed provides life and helps them grow clear it does provides them life and it does helps them in growing as well what does the rain do when she doesn't care if anyone bothers about her deeds or not what does the rain do when she doesn't care if anyone bothers about her deeds or not she talks to the land okay she works harder she completes her work and talk to the earth she completes her work and comes back home so i have already told you that this is a conversational poem which is talking about the journey yeah and this journey is being mentioning this being mentioned here she completes her work and comes back home what does the poet compared the rain with so with what specific thing the poet compared the rain with song heaven beauty or flowers no 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 yes yes he compares the rain with basically a song next question why does the poet compare the rain with a song so why this comparison is being made between the rain and a song because she beautifies the earth because she provides life on earth as they both share a common journey or none of the above okay um as they both share a common journey because she provides life on earth because she provides she beautifies the earth that is as they both share a common journey they leave their originators behind they go they go take their own journey and they finally come back to their originator so they both share a common journey clear don't get confused please apply your senses wherever it is being required from where does the song originate from where does the song song here refers to the music it originates from heaven from ocean 
from the heart of the singer or from the soul of earth so what do you think can be the correct answer of this question from the heart of the singer that's too easy yeah song to humans hi banate na to from the heart of the singer if the poet has used a metaphor in the poem what is it i told you when you were discussing poetic devices we have discussed this one i am the poem of earth voice of the rain soft falling shower or none of the above metaphor metaphor means comparison so as per you where was the comparison made that is i am the poem of earth which is i am the poem of earth hyperbole exaggeration bada chhoda ki baat karna that's your hyperbole what hyperbole was used in the poem i am the poem of earth soft falling shower bottomless sea or voice of the rain kahan pe aapko lag raha hai that it's in hyperbole so clearly bottomless sea okay what happens to the rain in the sky what happens to the rain in the sky rain drops form rain it condenses it forms clouds or none of the above so what exactly happens to the rain in the sky mm, rain drops form okay uh, rain it condenses no it forms clouds indeed okay basically rain drops are formed inside um, the clouds in the sky it doesn't form clouds rather it forms the rain drops don't get confused it it doesn't form clouds but rather drops rain drops what does the word descend means descend means to fall okay what does the word descend means descend means to come down not clear come down to wash or hidden i have just told you ascending descending order bachpan mein karte the that means come down why does the rain descend to the earth why does the rain come back or fall or come back to the earth to wash the drought and provide water she provides life on earth a beautify and purify the earth it provides life what do you think basically to wash the drought and provide water to wash away uh, if there is any barren field and it to in rather to provide water to the barren field what does red or unregged mean red or unregged that means enrichment or no, no enrichment cared for or not cared for to purify or not or to wash or not to wash that is clearly this one okay where does the song return in the poem so where does the song return back to uh, wait it is supposed to be cared for or not cared for now how it can be to wash or not to wash yeah where does the poem where does the song return in the poem to its originator that is a singer to the poet to the earth to the ocean obviously to its originator humne ye wala question kuch der pehle bhi kiya tha like origination pe hi kuch tha so basically to its originator that is the singer what is the meaning of who art thou what do we mean by the term by this phrase who are you <laughs> that is clearly who are you i have told you already that is who are you who is the poet of the poem the voice of the rain too easy for you guys it's walt whitman portrait of a lady that's a story and supposed to be capital p abhi vs naipaul ka koi option nahi aaya hai koi topic cover nahi kiya hai and surely towson we have got a photograph right so this way we are so done with this uh, topic right i hope you are very much clear very much certain 
with this i hope there are no uh, queries or uh, doubts left with all of you if you still have any doubts if you still want to clarify any of your doubts please write down in the comment box right and uh, as uh, by any chance if you're still not the part of the world of an academy so please download the app clear and once you are convinced once you're super sure uh, with the teaching if you're getting everything so clear it with you if if it goes that way so please 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 enroll yourself to plus or with iconic and for either of it you can use my code which is ambika to get a discount of 10% so please guys go for it with that i'm going to take your leave have a nice time ahead bye bye